I'm excited to have the opportunity to introduce the next person. Uh, he's legitimately one of my favorite people to speak to in crypto. I think I've interviewed him a, a half a dozen times. You probably heard of him, uh, Tim Draper, our, our afternoon uh, uh, keynote. Uh, no, I, I think he's quite a luminary in the industry, actually. Tim, thank you so much for being generous with your time to come speak with us today. Well, thanks for having me, Justin. And I hope everybody had a great summer vacation in, in the real world as well as in the virtual world. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's, it's been a, a pretty good summer for crypto for the most part. Um, I, I'm going to go ahead and uh, hand off to you for your presentation, but thank you for uh, taking the time to join with us. Very excited to hear what you have, what you have to say. Terrific. Well, you never know quite what's going to come out of my mouth, so uh, we'll see how this goes. Um, first of all, I'm honored to be uh, speaking to the Benziga Crypto Festival, uh, Crypto Trading Festival, uh, because I'm not a trader. <laughs> Um, I'm an investor. In fact, I'm sort of the opposite. I see my eyebrow going pretty high. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm pretty much the opposite. I'm a very long-term investor. So I thought about this and I thought about, well, what would be interesting to traders? Um, first of all, thank you very much for trading. Um, we appreciate the liquidity that traders provide. Um, it it uh, creates a much more active market. And I think we're all better off because of it. Um, <clears throat> but I thought I'd put together a few things I was thinking that might be relevant um, to traders. And, and one is that um, <clears throat> we're, um, I'm going to just give you longer term trends or, or things that I'm seeing that are, are longer term. And so as a trader, you'll see something go up like this long term or down like this long term. And you probably don't want to be caught in a downturn and you probably do want to catch the upturn. <clears throat> um, first, there are, um, the things I've noticed this summer are that institutions that are not holding Bitcoin will have to answer to investors Um and uh, and those investors are going to get more and more anxious as the government prints three trillion dollars. Um, and and uh, so we'll end up with much more inflation, much more um, of an environment of of <coughs> of um, where where the fiat money becomes much more of a commodity and much and more and more less valuable than the crypto uh, community. And, uh, and you're gonna start seeing a moment, you're gonna see a moment, I don't know when it is, maybe a year from now, maybe five years from now, where, um, where you can do everything in, in Bitcoin that you can do in dollars. So you can buy things retail, you can um, <clears throat> invest money, you can, uh, loan, you can do all those things in Bitcoin. Once that happens, there's going to be a switch thrown in people's heads where they say, do I want to operate in a currency that's tied to a government, tied to a, um, a uh, political whims of people? Uh, do I want to be tied to that? Or do I want to be involved in this new world? Um, and people often ask me, well, when are you going to sell your Bitcoin? And I, I say, into what? Why would I want to sell the future currency for the past currency? I mean, I can see uh, fiat currency going the way of the Confederate dollar or the um, the drachma or the French franc as this new technology moves forward, and uh, and and we all start using it. So I think we're <clears throat> I think we're all headed into the future in the right way, um, and. Uh, and then the other thing that I've noticed is that um, it, it used to be that only one in 14 Bitcoin wallets was owned by a woman. And now that number is like one in three. And so as the women come more into it more, um, women control about 80 percent of retail spending. They're going to demand things um, at retail where they don't have to use uh, fiat money and uh, and instead of using a credit card, they're going to uh, be buying buying and selling things in Bitcoin. 
uh, probably use, using Open Node or the Lightning Network or something like that. <clears throat> and and so these are um, these are kind of major trends. Um, so <clears throat> uh, so these are some of the major trends that I'm starting to see where. Uh, it, once Bitcoin is being used in all of these, uh, having all of these uses, um, we're going to not want to hold any dollars. In fact, there will be a a, a run on the dollars, <clears throat> and they're going to be buying in and use buying Bitcoin so that they can start operating in the um, future economy. And uh, and this summer, I, I noticed um, a real change. When I went to, I, I've been for five years going into retail establishments and asking, do you hold Bitcoin? And at first they said, I have no idea what you're talking about. And then they laughed. Then there was always this like, ha, ha. Uh, and that was probably for the last two or three years. This summer, for the first time, they were all saying, uh, we don't have it yet, but yes, we are going to get it. Or I went into a barber in New York and they said, yeah, we're, we've got it. Here's how you do it. And they were, I believe they were using open nodes. So um, I think that that's really exciting. And that is the beginning of a major, major trend. Um, <clears throat> and then what I'm, um, and, and then the other thing that's happening in the world is that all of these, um, financial systems are being built out and they call it DeFi. And that's the um, that's that now you can lend and borrow, you can option, you can f build future contracts, you can do all sorts of things uh, with Bitcoin and some of these other cryptocurrencies. And uh, and so that that is also going to establish Bitcoin as a central uh, point of of use so that that people will stop eventually stop using these government currencies that are tied to political whims and the governments are kind of having this last roar of the dying lion as they as they start to take uh these uh they're they're seeing their their uh, perceived power um going away but actually the, the best governments are the ones who, who push the power back down to the people. Um, and, and they, so they're seeing it, it go away. And so, so you're seeing this struggle that these governments are having. They're seeing that their people are benefiting from Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. They're getting uh, more more used to using them, they're uh, they're moving money much quicker. Uh, they're creating wealth and value and uh, jobs. They're they're doing extraordinary things with these new currencies, and they know that this is the future. But then they're they're still trying to cling to the past, and they're still trying to say no. But but you have to use our currency, and um, and you see China saying no. You Bitcoin's illegal here. You've got to. You got to use a, uh, you know, the Chinese yuan, and and we, by using the Chinese yuan, we're going to know every dollar, every yuan you spend, and we're we're going to know everything about you, and um, uh, and that's one extreme. Um, and but in these smaller countries that have been at the mercy of the bigger currency, bigger country currencies, those countries are really very excited about using um, cryptocurrencies. And so you see, you see Japan and Malta and um, Switzerland and a number of others saying, yes, we're going to make El Salvador, make um, Bitcoin a national currency. And that is the beginning of, um, of a little bit of a struggle. And then you see the U.S. and they're trying to balance that Hey, the future is going to be this technology, but we have all these antiquated laws, and we're trying to put those two things together. So you see the SEC saying, um, "Wait, we've got this 40 Act." You know, I mean, let's face it; it's 80 years old. But um, 
wait, the 40 Act would have been 1940. Yeah, it's 80 years old. And uh, and so uh, do we really still need to operate under that 40 Act? And I think that there's a little struggle within the SEC saying, well, look, we know that the economy is going to move toward this cryptocurrency world. And, uh, and how do we do that um, and still protect the people that we were protecting before? But if they don't, then they are, they have the, if they don't embrace uh, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, then they run the risk of losing the future. And uh, and if the U.S. had had done something like banning the Internet back in 1980, um, that that would have uh, that would have uh, eliminated so much wealth in the U.S. That wealth would have gone to other countries. And I think we've got the same thing going on now. They're struggling between, hey, we want to be the leaders in the economy and the Internet and the um, uh this new uh, crypto world, but we also um, are trying to sort of live up to all the laws that were put in place 80 years ago. So some interesting things happening and, and the fact that this has become a geopolitical issue means that Bitcoin really matters. It is so important. Um, and so, uh, I look at Bitcoin in a new way, which is Bitcoin is freedom and trust. Um, I believe uh, I believe in Bitcoin because I believe it is trust. It can be trusted, completely trusted, because, hey, all those miners are watching over everything that happens on the um, blockchain. And it's free in that you can move Bitcoin anywhere around the world and anyone can use it and it could be operated in a a, a world where it's um, it can be governed by company countries on the ground and it can be governed by a country 11 miles offshore or up in space. Uh, this is really kind of an exciting time. And I um, it, it's I've had a little time to reflect on it and I, I just can't imagine anything more important for humanity than this. I think we're going to take an anthropological leap forward. I have a dream, which is that I can raise a fund completely in Bitcoin. I invest in entrepreneurs completely in Bitcoin and have them pay their employees and suppliers completely in Bitcoin and have the whole thing on the blockchain, keeping perfect records, paying taxes, doing all the things that have to be done. Uh, and uh, and uh, and I don't need to pay my accountant, my bookkeeper, my auditor, my and even because we could put it all on a on a smart contract, um, I probably don't have to pay my lawyer as much. And this is a this is an exciting new time. And I think um, and and I've been having a back and forth with the SEC about having a fund like that. But so many people have to get involved. The IRS has to get involved. The, the various uh, state governments have to get involved in order for people to recognize that that is a better way for them, uh, for the governments to collect taxes and to audit and keep perfect records. Mm -hmm. I mean, there won't be better records kept than the ones kept on the blockchain. Mm -hmm. So this is... Um, this is a great time. Now, people ask me, oh, what about the other currencies? What about currencies other than Bitcoin? Well, I think that um, I think they all have great potential. Um, but uh, I think of Bitcoin as Microsoft when we were going into the software world. And Microsoft was this um, I had the first operating system. They did this deal with IBM and it was a fantastic deal. IBM took the hardware, Microsoft took the software. IBM had no idea what hit them. Um, but then um, Microsoft said, we're going to be an open system. So open operating system. Anybody can build whatever they want on this operating system. Similar to what people have done with, um, with crypto. Uh, and then uh, all these applications started to come up. Uh, it was word processing and databases and spreadsheets and 
and a, and a number of and and then many other marginalized software things that were out, out there happening. Well, Microsoft, once they saw word processing being really big, they they started Word. They competed with one of their uh, their companies. They started Word to compete with Word Perfect and to compete with Lotus One Two Three. They they started Excel. They they started to pick and choose which ones really mattered. Mm -hmm. So I actually think that same thing's happening in with the Bitcoin world. They're saying, hey, DeFi seems to be a thing. NFTs seem to be a thing. Something else. And they're and and once they're all on on uh, on the Bitcoin operating system, uh, the, the there will be a flood to Bitcoin. But there will be these specialized, great new uh, software packages uh, that that come from these alternative currencies. I mean, I I'm really excited about, for instance, um, Ar Aragon because it um, the A N T they they're actually trying to create a whole new way of governing, of creating a jury and a, a, a way of voting, a, a liquid democracy. Um, that's something that probably won't flood into Bitcoin right away um, and might might end up being really big because um, I'm, I'm looking at um, where the internet, I got to be an investor in the internet and I got to see how it transformed gaming and entertainment and media and communications and all sorts of big industries. But um, but Bitcoin has the potential to transform the biggest industries in the world. Hey, hey Jim, are, we're, we're, start, we're starting to run out of time. Um, OK, but, let's open it up for questions. Well, let, let me just ask you a quick one. Um, you made a price prediction, I think, in 2017. You've stuck by it the whole time, which I, which I, I really respect. Um, you know, how, how are we looking right now? I believe the price prediction was on a, a 250,000 by the end of 2022, early 2023, right in there. And, and I'm, I think we're right on track. Mm -hmm. Um, people, you know, it was 4,000 when I made that prediction. Yeah. I remember. Um, people, people and, uh, and people were thinking I was completely nuts. Um, mm -hmm. and now, now it's running around, it's close to 50, something like that. Um, and, uh, and I think as, um, as more and more women grab these wallets and as, as people start using, um, Bitcoin for DeFi and for, um, NFTs and a, a number of other things, as they start grabbing more and more of that, um, I, I think we're, we're right on track. Um, and, once it hits 250, beyond that, it's uh, it's anybody's guess because then it becomes almost the standard currency around the world, right? And uh, and that would mean um, you know today a hundred trillion is the number of uh, mm -hmm. dollars around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, that that could be uh, that could be doubled because of the efficiency of cryptocurrency. We could actually. Right double or triple the world economy because of cryptocurrency. So it's true. yeah, well, I'm, well, I'm, well, uh, I think 250,000 by the end of 2022, early 2023, um, we're right on target. And by the way, I did, <laughs> I mean, if you need my credibility, when Bitcoin was 180, mm -hmm. I predicted 10,000 in three years and I did it on air. Right. Um, and it hit 10,000 exactly three years from that time. Mm -hmm. Um, and and uh, what I do is I combine a little bit of uh, of math uh, where where I'm running a bunch of uh, simulations and I combine that with some uh, gut instinct mm -hmm. and that's where I come up with these uh, predictions. But I think uh, we're right on. And the other thing is I all I meet are people who are thinking five to ten years mm -hmm. forward. So mm -hmm. uh, so that's those are the people I'm. I'm talking to as a venture capitalist. And so I'm always, I'm a pretty good predictor of what, what's going to happen in the future. I'm not so good at what's going on today, you know, whether right. it's 
Well, well, I thank you so much, Tim. It is always a pleasure to speak with you. We're about three minutes over now, but, but I really, really appreciate you uh, taking the time to speak with us. Thank you for joining us today at the show. Terrific. All right. Go get I love the tie. Traders. I wanted to ask if, about if you're it. you're looking for something to buy, just follow my tie. Yes, and, <laughs> and, and uh, thank you very much for, for joining us. I appreciate it.